What's going on everybody? Alonzo here with GulfCoastSmoke.com and today we're smoking baby back ribs on the Weber Smoky Mountain. These are easy, these are delicious, and I don't think you need to overcomplicate these. Let's get right into this cook. Today I have two racks of baby back ribs that we're going to be smoking. I've already taken the membrane off of these and one of the things that I do like to do is if you get your finger and actually push between two of the bones, you'll notice that some of this blood right here will come out of these baby backs and then you can clean that up with a napkin and I found that when I do this I just get a better presentation in the end you guys obviously do not have to do this at all but I just found that I really like the way they look I'm always trying to make these ribs look and taste delicious so if you guys want to try that step by all means go ahead and do it if you don't that's completely fine too and once we're done with that, we do want to trim these up just a little bit, but don't forget, this is backyard barbecue, so we're not too worried about getting a competition style trim here. I have a little bit of excess meat here on the end that I'll take off just because I definitely don't think that that's going to cook well at all. Probably just crisp up. And for the backside, that looks completely fine to me. I will say that this is a pretty big chunk of meat right here. And although I know it's going to taste really good, it's just excess in comparison to the rest of these ribs so i'm just going to take a little bit of that off like i said i want this to be as even as possible and don't forget that this does not have to be wasted so we could put this on the smoker this can be a little treat for us while we're waiting for the rest of the ribs to be done but there's a little bit of excess fat here that i'll take off but again i'm not too worried about that these are perfect exactly the way they are now so I'm completely done trimming this rack. What I'll do is I'll get the other one the same exact way and then we're gonna season. Now on this second rack here, there's a bone that's completely cracked and I don't really wanna mess with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off. You guys are more than welcome if you see something like that to keep it on, but you can see that we're really not losing that much and that bone is cracked. I just don't want anyone to accidentally grab this and hurt themselves or anything like that. So I'm gonna completely remove this. For our seasonings today, we're going to be using 16 mesh black pepper, southern bell, and southern hospitality. When we're trying to build a nice bark like we're going to today, we found that southern bell and black pepper just really does the trick. And then of course, we want those classic barbecue flavors, and that's exactly what southern hospitality is going to bring. We are going to be using a binder today. We're using mustard. If you guys don't like to use yellow mustard as a binder, use something else or completely omit that from this part. But let's get right to seasoning and then we're going to go outside to the Weber Smoky Mountain. I always like to start on the backside because the top is our presentation. And we're just going to use that yellow mustard and put a line on the back of both of these ribs. This I have not found adds any flavor to the pork, but... Soon I want to try a video where we use a lot of different binders and see if we can't find something that adds flavor because in the long run, I don't think it's a bad thing to add flavor as long as it's good flavor. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, drop them in the comments down below. That's a video that I want to do really, really soon. And once we're done with our binder, we're going to start with this 16 mesh black pepper. The coat does not have to be too heavy. There is black pepper in Southern Bell as well. But again, I just found when we're trying to build that bark, this works perfectly. And this right here is exactly what I wanna see. You'll see once we add that Southern Bell, there's gonna be a good amount of pepper on these. Next up is Southern Bell, and this was designed for beef, but I promise you, all the flavors that you get in here are so good that you could put this on anything. So we got another light layer going on, and if you guys can see that pepper, adding to the pepper that we already put on there it gives you a great layer of flavor all over there's a little bit of sugar in here there's some salts there's some other spices that are just going to take your barbecue game to another level and even though we have beautiful color already this southern hospitality is going to bring the sweet it's going to bring that beautiful red barbecue color and this is going to take it really to another level the smokiness the sweetness you get a great great flavor here and you don't have to go too heavy because we're layering flavors but you can see that beautiful red barbecue color is already coming through on the back side of these ribs so this i already know is going to be absolutely incredible and hopefully you guys can see this in the camera but you can see that black pepper you can see a little bit of that parsley you can see those orange peel granules in there and that is exactly what i want i don't want to overpower this but i want all of these flavors to work together in order to give us the best possible rib. 
Now we're gonna do the same exact thing to the top of these ribs. And one of the things that I will say, if you do use a binder, you most definitely do not need a lot. So this is really just to help it stick to this meat here. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing again by starting with some of this 16 mesh black pepper. Then we're gonna come back with our Southern Bell. And then we're gonna finish off with our Southern Hospitality. Now that we're done seasoning our ribs, let's head straight outside and get this Weber Smoky Mountain set up. I've been doing things a little bit differently lately, so I wanna show you guys exactly what I'm doing, and I wanna talk about what I'm shooting for with our cook. So we're outside at the Weber Smoky Mountain, and now I wanna show you guys a few of the things that I've been working on that I've been kinda of playing with when it comes to getting some smoke on my barbecue. So I watched a Jerby video a while back where he actually put the briskets on before he even started his fire. And then he started his fire with some lighter fluid, which is not necessarily what I'm going to do today, but I kind of took that and I thought about it and I'm like, well, if the smoke in the beginning is a little bit harsh, that's okay because the meat's only going to catch smoke for a few hours. And then after that, we're going to wrap them anyway. So I do want a good amount of smoke on them in the beginning. So the way I'm going to set this up today is I'm going to have two chunks of wood. In my Weber Smoky Mountain, there's three vents here. I'm going to completely shut down two of them. And one of the reasons why I do that is because number one, it's hot here in South Texas and I already know that I don't need all of these vents open. It's going to get hot on its own. Just from being outside, it's around 97 degrees. So it is what it is, but that's what I'm gonna do. So now I'm gonna put one of my chunks of wood right next to the open vent on my Weber Smoky Mountain. And then I'm gonna fill up our charcoal ring with B&B briquettes. And I know that this is plenty. I don't need this full for around a four hour smoke. Now I'm gonna put two B&B charcoal starters right in the middle of all of my charcoal. I prefer to use the Minion method every single time I use this Weber Smoky Mountain. Now I'm gonna light these up, and then I'm gonna move some of my charcoal briquettes closer to these starters just so I can make sure that they catch and we start that Minion method. Now I wanna put the barrel on my Weber Smoky Mountain and I like to make sure that my door is facing the same exact way as my open vent. I'm gonna open this, just so we could get some oxygen on the inside and we can make sure that those briquettes get nice and hot. And after about 15 minutes, you can see that our charcoal is nice and hot and there's no more flame in there. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a chunk of this pecan wood right over top and that's gonna catch in a second and that's gonna start releasing that smoke. We're gonna put the ribs on right now. It's nowhere near the temperature that I want it to be in order to cook these, but we're gonna start getting that smoke flavor on it right away. All right, and about two minutes later, we're just gonna go ahead and put these ribs on. Like I told you guys, this is not up to temp yet. I am not at 250 or 275 degrees, but I'm gonna put these on. And even though my smoker is not up to temp, I'm completely okay with putting these ribs on right now. They're gonna start getting smoke right away and I know that this is gonna burn clean. So just the same way that I like to do it when I get my offset going is I like to build a good bed of coals and then I'll put my sticks right over the coals and that causes a fire to start. So you want a good clean fire inside of your smokers and that's exactly what I got here today. So I built a small bed of coals, much smaller than I would in an offset smoker, but I put my chunk of wood right on top of the hot bed of coals and that's exactly what was able to start that wood on fire and that's why I have a good clean smoke already. Now, as time goes on, it's gonna get a little bit cleaner because it does take a few seconds, a few minutes in order to get smoking exactly what I want, but this is completely fine. So these ribs are only gonna take in smoke for a few hours at the most. And then don't forget, we are gonna be wrapping these in around two hours, so I'm completely okay with this. So just think about it. You wanna build a nice fire inside any smoker that you use. So when you're using these chunks, you can still catch them on fire as long as you have a nice good bed of coals. Okay, it's been 45 minutes on our ribs and we're sitting at right around 260 degrees. I closed the bottom vent about halfway and I'm okay with a steady climb to 275 degrees, which is where I wanna zone in at. If it goes up to 300, I'm completely okay, but starting slow and gradually getting higher is the way I've been liking to cook lately. Let's go ahead and take a look at these ribs. If we need to spritz, we're just using nothing but water today. I wanna see how these look. Oh yeah, 
that the black pepper on these looks absolutely incredible. I definitely don't like that spot right there where it looks like some of the blood came out, but it's okay. I'm just going to leave these. Like I said, these are backyard ribs, but so far, so good. The color's looking nice. I don't think there needs to be any spritz applied because there's plenty of moisture on top of these ribs, but let's let these go another 45 minutes and we'll come check them one more time. Okay, it's been an hour and a half on these ribs, and just about 15 or 20 minutes ago, the Weber Smoky Mountain got to 275 degrees, which is where I wanted to stay the rest of the smoke. So I cracked the bottom vent. It's barely open. Like I said, it's hot in Texas right now, so that might not necessarily work for you, but just play around with your vents. You are going to have to learn your Weber Smoky Mountain. So now we're going to take a look at these ribs. If we need to spritz them, just like we talked about earlier, we'll hit it with water, and we're just wanting to see that bark nice and set. When I tap the ribs with my finger, I don't want any of the seasoning to come off, but let's take one more look and then we'll bring you back next when it's time to wrap. And you guys can still see that beautiful color on these ribs, a nice red color. There are some spots here that definitely look good. And then I see some spots here where there's still a little bit of moisture building. So right now I'm not going to hit these. I want that moisture to dry up just a little bit before I feel comfortable spritzing because I want this pepper and I want everything to stay on these ribs. And also while we're out here, I wanted to show you guys the setup. You could see that that first chunk is completely wilted away pretty much. And then we're starting to get some smoke over here on that other chunk that I put closest to the vent. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get everything to burn this way. This is the only location right here where oxygen can come in. So I want this fire to burn this way. Eventually it will burn that way as well. But that's why I wanted this chunk right over here. So we get smoke in the beginning, continuously getting smoke. Now we're going to get that second burst of it. And then, like I told you guys earlier, in a minute, we're going to wrap these anyway. So we're not worried too much about that. But that's exactly why I've been setting my Weber Smoky Mountain up like this. I get smoke in the beginning. It gets nice thin blue smoke throughout, then we're going to get that second burst, which is going to keep that smoke flavor consistent. And exactly two hours later, you can see where we're at with our baby back ribs. The color looks incredible. Now it's just time to wrap these in some foil and get them nice and tender. So if you look at the back here, you can see that there is a little bit of disintegration on these bones for sure. But I want a little bit more and I want to make sure that these are nice and tender. So baby back ribs are super thick. There's a lot of meat in here and I just want to make sure that everything is nice and juicy and fully cooked. So we're going to check these in one more hour and then once we're done, we'll decide if we want to sauce them or not. And at this point of the cook, I really do not care how hot this smoker gets. I mean, I definitely don't want it 450 degrees or anything crazy like that, but 300, 325 is just fine. They're in the foil. Now all we want these is to get tender. So again, we're going to check these in one hour, and then if they're where we want them, I'll show you guys how they look, and then we'll put them in a cooler for an hour just to rest, relax a little bit, let those juices redistribute. And then we did decide that we are going to use a sauce. I'll show you that in a little bit. It's been another hour on these ribs. They've been wrapped in that foil inside the Weber Smoky Mountain. Let's take a look. I'm pretty sure that they're done. I've done this enough times to where I'm pretty positive I can get these ribs done in around three hours. And then I rest them for a little bit. We'll sauce them and let it tack up. But let's take a look together. Yeah, just in the foil here, they feel really tender. Let's go ahead and unwrap here. Oh yeah, yep. These are perfect, I can tell. Look at the pullback on these bones. They're very, very hot, so obviously don't do this exactly the way I'm doing it, but you see the pullback, meaning the meat is pulling away from the bone here, exposing them, looking beautiful, and I know that they're nice and tender. Let's go inside just so we can show you guys the temperature they're at right now. I typically don't care too much about that. I know these are done, but just for everybody looking at home, I want to make sure you know what they're temping out at. All right, these ribs are looking outrageous. I love that you can see that black pepper there. And I wanted to show you guys that they're temping out right at around 201 degrees. 
I could go a few degrees longer, but this is going to be completely fine. Now I'm just going to put these in my cooler and we're gonna close that cooler for one hour. So the reason that I've opened this foil here is just so it doesn't continue to cook. I do wanna make sure that it breathes a little bit. We wanna stop that cooking process. So I'll let them sit here for around 15 minutes and then they're gonna go into my cooler for one hour to rest. Then we're gonna come back, sauce these up, tack that up, then it's time to eat. And exactly one hour later, we are finally done resting these ribs. They're still hot. They smell outrageous. And today we're gonna be using some Tabasco honey barbecue sauce. I was just in the grocery store and I saw this and I wanted to give it a shot. We've never tried it before. It says new on the label, so I'm not sure how new, but I've never seen it. it kind of smells like sweet baby rays, if I'm being honest. And after we put our barbecue sauce all over the ribs, you can see that it's pretty thick. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Sweet Baby Ray's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this liquid that just came out of the ribs that's in this foil wrap. And I'm going to use it to brush on this barbecue sauce just to make sure that it gets nice and evenly coated. There's nothing wrong with a thick barbecue sauce necessarily, but you're more likely to see brush marks on the ribs if you have a really thick barbecue sauce. So even if I need to get some of the juice from this other rack, I'm just gonna make sure that I completely paint these. And man, I'll tell you what, looks good. The sauce smells good, but we'll see how this tastes just in a minute. We're gonna take these back out to the Weber Smoky Mountain. They'll sit on the smoker just until this tacks up and it gets a nice, good color on there so that should take no longer than 10 or 15 minutes but we'll show you these ribs when they're done and of course when it's time to eat And around four and a half hours later, these ribs are completely done. You can see by the B-roll and the slicing that they look outrageous. Don't forget, we're gonna try that new sauce just to see how it tastes, but let's take a bite. Still looks juicy, looks beautiful. The color is on point. Oh my gosh. Perfect bite. And you know what, that sauce is pretty darn good. I kind of expected it to have a little bit of sweet to it because it is a Tabasco product but honestly, I taste zero. I would say it tastes really close to Sweet Baby Ray's, has that same thickness and everything. That's why we thinned it out with a little bit of the juices that came out of the ribs and were in that rib wrap. I think one of the most important things when you're smoking these ribs is letting them rest. Let them rest for an hour. I got that from Tennessee Mojo Barbecue. His YouTube channel, he has a lot of, lot of great tips on smoking ribs. I mean, the guy is 100% a rib expert pretty much and if you guys don't follow him go ahead and check out his channel that's where i learned a lot of the tips that i've been using on my ribs lately so don't forget also we did i don't want to say perfect but we kind of changed the way we're using that minion method so we still get that bed of coals nice and hot right in the middle and that starts that chunk on fire then everything's going to burn towards the one vent that we have open and that just allows for that double burst of smoke like I talked about earlier. I don't know if that's what I want to continue to call it, but I think it worked out really well and it's been working out really well for me. If you guys want to see us cook anything else on the Weber Smoky Mountain, drop a comment down below. It really is my second favorite cooker in my arsenal. As always, I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. That felt really energetic when I said that as always. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.